In previous videos, we looked at the idea of chaining together multiple function processes. Let's look at that idea again and then come up with a notation for representing this idea. When, we, when we're talking about chaining together function processes, we usually refer to this as function composition. So what we want to do is come up with a notation for function composition. Let's consider two functions f and g. So the function f will take x as its input and then output y. And the function g is going to take a value of y as its input and output uh, a value for the variable z. So notice that the output of the function f becomes the input for the function g. We can represent these two functions using function machines. So I'll draw a little doodle of a function machine like this, which represents the function process f. And the function f takes a value of x as its input and then outputs a value of y. We can do something similar for the function g. So we'll draw a little doodle of a function machine and we'll call this g. And this function g takes y as its input and then outputs a value for z. However, notice that the output of the function f is what we're inputting into g. So we can kind of ignore that y there and just take this output of f and input it right into g if we want. So chaining together these two function processes produces just like a single process. If we kind of ignore what goes on in the middle and think of this just as one function process, then we can represent this. We'll just draw a little rectangle around it. So we'll create a new function process that inputs a value of x and then outputs the corresponding value of z. And notice that this function process like essentially contains the function processes for f and g, it just kind of encapsulates them into one thing. Now we should try to come up with a useful name for this function. So let's think about what this function actually does. First we input a value of x into the function f and then f gives us a value of y back. But this value of y is really the same as the value of f of x because y is equal to f of x. So then what we're doing is inputting f of x into this function g. And then g gives us a value of z as its output. So we can think of z as the output of g at a given input value. And what we're inputting into g is actually a value of f of x. And therefore, the output of this new machine is g of f of x. So we write it like this. It's the output of g when the input is the output of f at an input of x. So it looks like kind of a lot, but it's just chaining together two function processes. We usually say g of f of x to represent this output. And if we want to name this function, kind of like an f or a g, in mathematics we usually write this as g of f. So this is supposed to be like a little um, floating circle in between there. So g of f is the name of this green function. I should have wrote that in green. So g of f. Now it's not an O, it's like a floating little circle there. So that notation is what we use to name this function whose output is g of f of x. 